Repair Balangay as the national boat of the Philippines. And then we have a few bills. Uh, House Bill number 1533 and House Bill number 1531, which are uh, which the objectives are to rename the schools. And then we also have some bills on conversion of schools, House Bill number 5872, House Bill number 5743, House Bill number 5742, House Bill number 5741, and House Bill number 5740. And then we also have a few bills uh, which will deal with the creation of schools. Schools Division Office, House Bill number 5744, House Bill number, four, House Bill number 4954, and lastly, House Bill number 4955. Uh, before we continue to tackle this, uh, let me direct the committee secretary to acknowledge our guest and resource persons for the day. Uh, may we acknowledge the presence of Representative Lawrence Law Fortune. Good morning, sir. Representative, Representative Maximo Dalog Jr. Mr. Alejandre, Mayor Tobasco Cardenas, Reverend Father John Christian Young, Mr. Arturo Valdez, Dr. Ted Esguera, Mr. Fongyu, Mr. George Navarra, and Attorney Josefa Sorera T. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, hey, yes, sir. Yes, good morning, Chair Sir Sherwin and the good rest morning. of the guests. Let me apologize the presence of uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Good morning, ma'am. Maraming salamat morning. for joining us. Um, today we will uh, start with the uh, most straightforward bills. Uh, we will start with the two bills uh, that deals with the renaming of schools. Uh, this is House Bill 1533 and House Bill 1531. Uh, for an orderly discussion, we will tackle the bills one by one. Uh, we will request the authors of the bill to uh, um, uh, sponsor the bill, uh, say a few words about the bill, and then um, we will go on to the next House bills. So we start with House Bill 1533, as authored by Representative Joey Salceda. I understand that Representative Joey Salcedo is not around. Uh, he is represented by Mr. Zaldi Santillan. Nandito po si Mr. Santillan. Yes, po, Senator. Yes, sir. Are you the representative of uh, Congressman Salceda? Yes, sir. I'm Mr. E.A. Pa. Sige pa. We'll tackle with uh, House Bill number 1533. And you may uh, sponsor the bill. No, uh, um, we have no statement, uh, Your uh, Your Honor. We'll just uh, have to do with our explanatory, not with our bill. Um, can you just at least describe to us the uh, bill? Give us a brief background of uh, House Bill Number One Five Three Three. Yes, Pastor, uh, Your Honor, thank you, Pastor. Um, House, House Bill 1533 is a 
um, changing the name of Ilawut National High School in Tarangay Ilawut Kamalik Albay uh, to make it a national a Kamalik National High School. Maybe also get the uh, um, comments of the Department of Education, Yusek Jess, uh, Yusek Jess Mateo. Yeah. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning to all. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator Aimee. Yeah. Whilst we are not, we, we are supporting the bill. We just like to take note that there is a Department Order Number Forty, Series of uh, Twenty Fourteen entitled Establishment, Merging, Conversion, Naming, the naming of Public Schools, and Separation of Public School Annexes in Basic Education. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have the administrative order already. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the purpose of which is to establish, to merge, to convert, to name, rename public schools, and even uh, converting annexes into a standalone uh, schools. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You said uh, my simple question is: Is the House, is House Bill Number One Five Three Three compliant of the Department Order Forty? I know that the DO Forty has a checklist of uh, things that uh, the proponent has to do. Uh, but based on your based on your analysis, have they complied with the list of uh, requirements? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, I see the presence of our regional director, Gilbert uh, Sadsad, because normally we uh, also get the uh, comments of our regional directors because they are the ones responsible uh, under the DEPED uh, memo order to uh, establish, merge, convert uh, all these schools. Okay. Mr. Okay. Chair, can we recognize uh, uh, regional director Gilbert Sadsad? We recognize the we recognize RG. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, this is Gilbert Sadsad of Deputy Region 5. Uh, fair assessment of this region before it was filed as a house bill in the lower house. We already uh, uh, concluded that said the uh, renaming of the school to from Ilawod National High School to Kamalig National High School is compliant per DEPED order number 40 based on the criteria enumerated in said uh, DEPED order. So, Your Honor, uh, the said bill or the renaming of the school is compliant to DEPED order number 40. Thank you, uh, RD. Thank you for that comment. And with that, um, we will uh, proceed with um, reporting out, or we will proceed with considering House Bill 1533 um, and sponsor it on the floor. Of course, subject to uh, compliance of the documentary requirements that the Senate needs to receive. But uh, upon the uh, recommendation of the regional director that uh, this bill has uh, uh, substantially complied or, or has complied with all the requirements, we will proceed with the committee report on the said bill. Um, subject to uh, the requirements that need to be submitted uh, in order to complete the committee report. Uh, next is House Bill 1531. Uh, again, um, sponsored by Representative Salceda. May we again call on uh, Mr. Saldi Santillan to sponsor the bill. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 1531 is um, um, our bill which seeks to change the name of uh, Pagasa. The, 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 <clears throat> Sorry, um, the Pagasa National uh, Ligaspi City National uh, Pagasa National High School to Ligaspi City National High School. Thank you, Mr. Santillan. Again, we call on R. D. Gilbert Sansad to uh, 
give us uh, a report on the compliance of the said uh, proposal? Uh, relative to House Bill Number 5740 on the renaming of Pagasa National High School to Legazpi City National High School, the same as per Dep. and Order Number 40 and uh, Dep. and Order Number 29, the revised guidelines of the naming of schools, uh, we found it compliant, substantially compliant to the criteria mentioned in Dep. and Order Number 40 and Number 29. Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, RD. The, the, the checklist, I mean, no? we have a checklist, and this checklist is based on uh, the O40. Uh, for HB1531, we don't have a copy of the authorized by the local Sangunian. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. This yeah, this will go through Congress, no, instead of the local Sangunian. Your Honor, since uh, this is initiated by the Congress, the local Sangunian Bayan or Sangunian Sangunian need not anymore to initiate a resolution. Correct, correct. I, I, uh, I apologize for the uh, comment. Uh, since this will be enacted through Congress, then Congress will be... Uh, will be the one renaming the school. So with that uh, comment uh, from yours, um, RD, we will proceed again uh, on House Bill 1531. We will proceed with the committee report subject to further submission of documentary requirements if need be. Uh, but with the comment of the RD, we will proceed now with the committee report. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Thank you RD. Uh, now we go to the conversion of schools. We will uh, start with the conversion of schools, House Bill number 5872. Uh, we recognize the presence of Representative Dalog for your sponsorship. Uh, thank you, Your Honorable Chairman, uh, Senator Wynne Castellan, Honorable Members of the Committee, my dear colleagues and guests, uh, from the Department of Education. Good morning, or as we say in Makati Province, the way say I go to mean House Bill Number Five Eight Seven Two uh, seeks to separate uh, the Ginaang National High School, Mainit Extension, in Barangay Mainit, uh, Municipality of Botok Mountain Province, from the Ginaang National High School, converting it into a national uh, high, sc high school. Independent National High School to be known as the Mainit National uh, High School uh, and appropriating funds, therefore. Uh, Mountain Province is among the least privileged areas in the country in terms of accessibility of, to education considering its geographical terrain. Uh, children and students who are very interested to attend a formal school sometimes have to walk long distances by climbing uh, mountains and even crossing rivers or creeks just to attend their classes. Thus, the foregoing extension school was established to at least solve the distance constraint that these children or students have to endure. And the foregoing uh, extension school had existed for several years. Thus, their separation, thus, the separation from its mother school would definitely enhance its capability to fulfill its mandate and contribute to the overall development of the province. I humbly ask the honorable members of this committee for the approval of the foregoing bill, uh, Mr. Ch honorable Chairman. Thank you, thank you, Congressman. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I mean here. Uh, Senator Aimee. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd uh, just like to uh, extend our full support and um, expression of the urgency of the uh, Cordillera conversion of schools being that this is one of the poorest, least advantaged uh, regions in the country. And I attest to the difficulty and uh, the 
problems in education in that area. Um, up against uh, long standing and enthusiastic desire of the Cordilleras to acquire physical education. Salamat, congratulations to Congressman Dalong. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Senator Aimee. And we call now on DepEd to uh, give us uh, give us their comments on the uh, compliance of the bill. Yusek uh, Mateo. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Your, Chair, Your Honor. Unfortunately, uh, our director in car is not present, but we have read the bill. We are supporting uh, the bill for the conversion of that school to a uh, permanent one. Uh, following the Department Order Number 40, Series of uh, 2016. Uh, Yusek, we're not. Uh, I'm looking at the checklist, no, for uh, Mainit National High School. This is House Bill 5872, and we don't have a copy of the requirements, no. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, the documents. Um, in one of the requirements under the checklist, there must be an existing school site of at least 5,000 square meters or half a hectare. And then it goes, any documents such as, but not limited to the deed of donation, deed of sale or contract or use of rock or 50 years executed in favor of DepEd, OCT or TCT, the name of DepEd. Uh, wala hong kami nito Sa Senate, no? But I would like to ask the Ped kung meron hong silang copy. Uh, let, uh, I don't have it uh, with me right now, uh, Mr. Chair. I, uh, if you will allow us, we will submit all those documents in coordination with uh, the sponsor po and the uh, superintendent of the particular division po. Thank you. Since the Ped is supporting this bill, and I would assume that the, uh, I was asking, I was asking if we have any representative from the. Basic Education Committee in the lower house. But uh, I don't think we do. I don't think we have any representative from the lower house. I will just make a um, assumption that uh, since this was endorsed by the lower house, uh, the documentary requirements were reviewed and complied with in the lower house. I was made to understand also that um, uh, they were having trouble transmitting the documents to us because of the uh, lockdown. However, uh, with the positive support of DepEd, uh, we will uh, approve the said measure subject to the submission of all the documentary requirements. Again, we don't have any, I, I just want to put on record, we don't have any uh, physical copy nor any photocopy of the documents but since um, uh, the House of Representatives have already approved this and they go through the same process as what uh, the Senate go through uh, we will uh, await for the uh, documentary requirements from the House of Representatives and from DepEd whichever comes first so with that we will uh, uh, we will uh, approve HB5872 subject to the documentary requirements from DepEd and the House. Uh, with that, we go to House Bill 5743. Again, um, sponsored by Representative Maximo Dalog. Congressman, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The House Bill Number 5743 uh, is a bill to separate the Dalanao Elementary School, the Burab Dalanao Extension in Barangay Bakari, Municipality of Parasilis, Mountain Province, from the Dalanao Elementary School, converting it into an independent elementary school to be known as the Welly McClinic Elementary School, and appropriating funds thereof. Therefore, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, I humbly ask uh, the members of this uh, committee to for the approval of this uh, House of House Bill Number Five Seven Four Three, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you said, uh, Jess, uh, comments on the compliance, documentary compliance? Um, again, similar, Mr. Chair, again, similar to uh, what we mentioned about the previous uh, bill, uh, we invited the regional director. We don't, I don't have right now in physically in my possession all the documents. Now, we'll coordinate, but we support the, the bill. We'll coordinate with the regional director to submit all the requirements uh, pertinent to that. I'm pretty sure that uh, it went through the process of reviewing by our regional director at the lower house when it was uh, uh, submitted to the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You suggest, I would assume that uh, with your uh, support, manifestation of support uh, to these bills, uh, this went through the scrutiny of the Ed. Yes, Paul. Uh, by the re Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, by, by the regional director and okay. the superintendent. Usually, Mr. Chair, uh, under the department order number 40, uh, it will go through this uh, division superintendent, and then it will go up to the regional director for final uh, vetting of the central office. But as I've said, under that department order, the regional director uh, can uh, approve the uh, creation of such. So, in other words, the regional director will not endorse anything that uh, uh, anything that is outside or anything that will violate the Department Order 40. Yes, Pa. Uh, they will. They normally submit all those uh, bills that they have approved, or uh, sorry, the creation of schools for purposes of uh, ensuring that will be included in the budget. So, in this case, if this is approved. Uh, this will be reflected uh, in the budget of 2021, subject to the approval of uh, the DBM and then eventually by Congress. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As for, for, for this particular bill, the Willie McClinic Elementary School, we noticed that the, in the EBEIS, this is the information system of the schools, uh, wala siyang documents. So does this mean that the school is not in the information system, you say? Um, Mr. Chair, um, sorry, can you, re uh, can you repeat your question, please? For this particular bill, House Bill 5743, uh, the Convention of School, Mr. What Chair. are the documents on EBEIS, which is the information system of schools? Uh, does it mean uh, the school is not in the information system? Sorry, Mr. Chair, really, uh, there's something wrong with the, with the audio. Okay, can you hear me now, Yusek? Is it clear? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, Mr. Chair. Yes. I can hear you. Okay. You said itong House Bill 5743, the conversion of the Wheelie McClinic Elementary School. I saw in the checklist na wala siyang EBEIS, the information system. Does this mean that the school is not in the information system? Hindi po, magkaiba ho yun. Baka yung, kasi annex yata yan eh. No po. Uh, so if, if, if the annex will now become a uh, standalone school, they will have a separate ID in the BEIS. Until then, they don't have the separate ID because uh, they, they are part of the uh, mother school. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so in, in this case, wala talaga siya sa uh, EB, uh, EBEIES. Apa. Kasi ano siya, uh, next. Apa. Ang EBIS stands for Enhanced Basic Education Information System part of which is the learner uh, the information learner information system and the school id po in the school id correct so wala siyang in, in other words wala siyang school id because annex pa siya yeah, pa. okay all right so but nevertheless um, since there is a a positive support from uh, 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 um you said, yung ibang mga annexes may ID. Bakit ganun? Uh, Pano yun eh. Kasi bago yata to. I, I haven't seen the uh, bill yet because it's uh, reviewed by the our regional directors. Uh, 
Uh, that's why uh, if you will bear with me, I'll just consult with the regional director about this now. Okay. But since you have a positive support on this uh, bill, and uh, again, no, my, my assumption here is uh, the House have reviewed the documents, the regional director have re reviewed the documents, and with that review, um, this bill have complied with all the necessary requirements under DO40. Uh, we will uh, proceed with the approval of this bill. Uh, mm -hmm. We will proceed with the uh, with the sponsorship of this bill, subject to again, no, subject to the uh, document submission. submission of uh, the requirements from DepEd as well as the House of Representatives, whichever comes first. Yes, Mr. Chair. You may direct the regional director to contact our uh, committee secretary directly para ma kahit na email pwede na huyan. Apa, salamat po. All right. Then we uh, go to House Bill 5742, another bill uh, sponsored by Representative Dalog. Uh, Congressman Dalog, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. House Bill 5742 uh, is uh, a bill filed to separate the Lubun uh, National High School, Mabaliti Extension in Barangay Mabaliti, Municipality of Tajan, Mountain Province, from its map from its mother school, the Lubun National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as the Mabaliti National High School and appropriating funds, therefore. This uh, extension school is uh, almost 10 kilometers from its mother school. Uh, and uh, I uh, humbly ask the honorable members of this committee to for the approval of this bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Rep. Dalog, um, this is an annex, no? Annex pa siya ngayon, in Mabalite National High School? Yes, your, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Okay, so we're converting it into a full high school? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, to, we, we, we ask for the conversion into an independent national high school. Independent national high school, correct. Okay. Uh, any comments from uh, DepEd? Mr. Chair, as uh, in the other bills, we support it. But uh, again, um, uh, please bear with me. We will uh, uh, request the regional director to yes, submit yes, uh, sure. whatever uh, requirements no, uh, needed by the by the House, no, and by the Senate uh, to the approval of the expeditious approval of the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, uh, just to put on record that uh, uh, in our checklist. Uh, which is derived from DO40, there are numerous documents that are not in possession of the Senate. And, um, but since the House have already approved this and has looked over the documents and the and DepEd also has looked over the documents, uh, we will uh, approve this measure subject to the submission of uh, the documents by DepEd and the House. Again, Yusek, uh, you may uh, you may uh, request from your regional director to coordinate with our committee secretary. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. We move to the next is House Bill Number Five Seven Four One. Uh, again, uh, uh, sponsored by uh, Congressman Dalog. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Up. House Bill number 5741 uh, is a bill that seeks to separate the Gansada National High School, Mayag Extension, in Barangay Mayag Municipality of Bauku, Mountain Province, from uh, its mother school, the Gansada National High School, converting it into an independent national high school to be known as the Mayag National High School, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. And uh, I humbly ask the members of this committee for the approval of the said bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, any comments, um, Yusek uh, Mateo? Uh, again, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, again, uh, similar to the previous uh, bills, whilst we uh, we support it because we know the terrain of the that region, no? as mentioned by uh, even by Senator uh, Amy Marcos, it's essential 
That's the reason why we have the Department Order 40 is to ensure that all those annexes, uh, given the budgetary requirements, uh, will uh, soon be uh, in uh, standalone schools so that they have a separate budget, a separate uh, personnel as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, same with this representation. I've been to Goku and um, talagang very uh, challenging ang terrain doon, mountainous. Uh, the 10 kilometers can be a 10 kilometers of uh, mountainous area. So it's not simply walking on a straight line, but it can be walking from uh, top, uh, from, 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 from zigzags to from the mountains to valleys. Kaya talagang very challenging. And, uh, um, and uh, kaya, kaya, lang, kaya lang, Mr. Chair, gustong gusto ni Art Valdesian, mountaineering. <laughs> oh, malamig pa. And it's also a practice of the local government units to create annexes first. I'm sure she, I mean, when he was, uh, when she was a governor, she used to do that. But coming in Valenzuela, we do that also. That's the fastest way to establish schools, eh? and then later on to convert it into an independent high school. So, That's true, Mr. Chair. Yeah, sure. Um, but uh, of course, the process dictates that we have to make sure that the requirements are all in place so that when we sponsor this to the floor, uh, we won't be questioned with the documentary requirements. And the same with the other House bill, uh, USEC, please submit to us all the documentary requirements. We will also request from our House counterpart to submit to us. Uh, I don't have... Uh, the Senate is not in possession of the documentary requirements, unfortunately, and it was uh, explained to us that because of the lockdown, uh, they had problems in transmitting the documents. But nevertheless, with the support of DepEd, we've already approved this measure and um, move to the committee report and uh, sponsor it on the floor uh, as soon as the committee report is uh, complete. With that, um, we now tackle the last in the conversion of school, House Bill number 5740. Uh, spons to be sponsored by um, Congressman Mangawag. Mangawang. Congressman, are you there? Ah. Yeah, Congressman, I can see you. Uh, you're recognized. Congressman uh, Mangawang. Congressman, nakamute po kayo. Yes, Congressman, I can see you, but we cannot hear you. Can have this. Hi, Alan. Kumusta kayo jan? Nako wala pa ring marinig. Wala, wala. Wala ako kami marinig, Kong. Pero chairman, puro NP naman yung mga congressman natin ngayon. Ako na lang magsasalita. Sponsor oh, natin yan. Kawawa ito sa Cordillera. You can, uh, ano, you can uh, help sponsor Senator Aimee. Dahil taga parehong region naman kayo. Parehong area pala. Kung Ali... Wala ka pa? Ako, wala pa si Alin. Alin. I can ayos, we can ayos. see you, Kong Allen. We can see you, but we cannot hear you. Oh, oh, baka atanggalin yung 
yung headphone. Huwag na lang mag-headphone, Mr. Chair. Oo nga, baka yung headphone nyo ho ninyo merong, merong problema. You can unplug the headphone. Ayan. Kung we can, um, we can, so that we don't um, waste time of the others. Kung while you're fixing your technical uh, issues, we can go with the creation of schools. Uh, we'll go back to um, to House Bill 5740 later on. We proceed with House Bill number 5744, uh, the creation of division office in the city of Canlaon, Negros Oriental. Uh, sponsored by uh, Congresswoman uh, Lim Kai Chong. Um, good morning, Chairman. Uh, morning. Can you hear me? I'm. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh, Loud and clear. Cross Oriental, and thank you so much for hearing this uh, vital bill, very important bill for our district. And uh, also, I see Senator um, Amy Marcos, um, Ayung Buntag po, and all the. Um, uh, those present in this virtual conference. I also see our mayor, um, very active mayor, Mayor Bacho Cardenas of Canlaon City. Anyway, oh, moving dear. forward, actually this House Bill 5744 was previously filed in the 17th Congress. And uh, it was approved by the House on uh, 2019, May of 2019, and transmitted to the Senate on May 21, 2019. But the CNED adjournment of the 17th Congress preceded the House bill approval in the upper house. So we know for a fact that education is a vital component of national development. And knowing that uh, Kanloon City, uh, it's very important since they are um, still within the um, um, part of the mother unit. And uh, Kanloon, the proposed uh, bill, it's the request uh, of the Sangunian of Kanlaon, and they filed a resolution, and therefore all the documents are in place. And uh, Kanlaon City is also is 166 kilometers away from Dumaguete, where the division office of the Department of Education is located. The travel time between the two cities is estimated at around five hours by bus. So given this factual circumstance, uh, the effective instructional and field supervision of the school has been difficult to achieve. So the desired efficiency in the administration of depth ed services to the public will be made possible through the enactment of this measure. So um, Mr. Chairman, in accordance with the state policy of providing quality education for its citizen, the approval of this measure is earnestly sought. And uh, so hopefully, Mr. Chairman, finally, it has reached your table. Uh, sana hindi naman ito malampasan, uh, malampasan pa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, Kong Josie. Um, may we hear from uh, DepEd, uh, Yusek Mateo, any comments? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, uh, Congresswoman Jim Kai Chong. Yeah, we, we support the creation of the division office in Kanlaon. But kindly take note though, um, Mr. Chair, that it will also have to go through the process of the DBM for the creation of those items no? and for this um, construction of a division office. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead, uh, ma'am. Yes. Uh -uh. Yeah, um, the city of Kanlaon uh, is represented by the mayor, and he's also in the virtual uh, conference right now. And I would like him to state the fact and manifest also his support to this bill. Um, we know for a fact that DBM it has to go through the process of asking DBM to set aside a budget, although it has been approved by the um, Committee on Appropriation in the lower house. Um, but it's um, normal that the DepEd would always um, uh, state those kinds of um, facts. Um, can we hear uh, uh, some words from the city of Kanlaon, um, Mr. Chair? Yes, 
we uh, recognize um pangalan um mayor jose chubasco cardenas po yes uh, I, uh, we recognize mayor uh, cardenas of uh, canloon city Mayor Cardenas, you recognize? Baka naka-mute siya. Mayor? Mayor Cardenas? Hello. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator Gatchalian. Yes, you recognize so. Uh, yes, uh, Senator, good morning to Mom Becky and Mr. Charles and of course, Jose Mateo. Good morning. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, uh, Senator, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, we would like to add a support uh, coming from the Senate with our request for our division hood in Canal City. Uh, due to the fact that uh, we are uh, 166 kilometers away from the mother unit. And for the information of this uh, Senate committee, uh, Kanlao City is uh, an L, uh, LCAP LGU, so we would like to earnestly request your uh, office with our intent to uh, avail the division hood and the fact that we are uh, allocating uh, 5 million uh, every year for the construction of division of office. So that is our clear manifestation that uh, the city uh, is really, uh, 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 the city is really uh, serious in uh, uh, for having our division. Of, so we would like to appeal your uh, respective uh, offices, uh, Mr. Senator. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. You suggest again, no? Um, uh, we don't have in our possession the required documents. Uh, for example, a MOA between the mayor and the regional director. Uh, we don't have that uh, document, so you sir. Um, yes, um, yes, we will submit uh, that. Um, um, Mr. Chair, since the mayor is here, we can ask uh, with regards to the status of that MOA. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's uh, already um, processed by our regional office before it uh, went to the central office. Thank you, Pat. Correct, correct. Ma mayor, itong MOA, have you executed this MOA already? Uh, yes, uh, Senator. In fact, I have uh, here with me the document, uh, the MOA. Okay. Which were already uh, submitted to uh, defend. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mayor. I, am, I apologize for uh, uh, not having those uh, documents because uh, I was made to understand that uh, uh, the Comsec of the lower house had problems trans transmitting those documents to us. Nevertheless, since uh, uh, DEPED have already signified their support for this measure, and that signification. Uh, uh, comes with it the compliance of all uh, documentary requirements, um, we will uh, approve uh, House Bill number 5744 subject to the submission of the documentary requirements by DepEd and also by the uh, House of Representatives. Um, the most important here is the recognition and the support of DepEd uh, because uh, at the end, DepEd will be the one uh, managing and also administering this uh, uh, new division's office in your city. So with that, uh, again, we will already approve this measure. We will already proceed with the committee report subject to the documentary requirements from DepEd and also from the House of Representatives. Thank you so much, you. Senator Gachalian, Chairman of uh, the DepEds. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support. It's Congratulations, a Mayor.
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Gachalian. The people of Ganlaon is very much thankful and grateful oh. to you, especially the Dipped family. Ma'am Josie Philin Kechong, thank you so much. And of course, may I have the honor to uh, inform uh, the Senator, the good Senator Aimee Marcos, that Ganlaon City uh, was uh, made the city by virtue of uh, Republic uh, Proclamation Number 344, which was uh, proclaimed by uh, President Marcos himself. So thank you so much, uh, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you, Mayor. Mas, uh, mas matanda pa ho ang Canlaon kaysa sa Valenzuela City. No, kami yes, 17 years old as a city, pero kayo eh tagal na pala. No? Oh, matagal, medyo matagal-tagal na po, uh, Senator, 1967 pa po. Oo oh, nga, matagal pa ba, matagal na pala ho kayo. Uh, kami, we were, we were just only 18 years old. No? Uh, yes, uh, so, yes, you're yes, uh, considered a pioneer city. Okay po. okay po, Senator, thank you so much. And for sure, this will help uh, the economic activities of the city if this division will be approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much and have a good day. Stay safe. Yes, thank you. Um, we go back to House Bill number 5740. Uh, Congressman. <laughs> Congressman, <laughs> Congressman Allen, can you hear us? Ayang di marinig. So, kung hindi namin kayo marinig. We can see you. You're very clear, but we cannot hear you. Uh, kung uh, habang inaayos niyo po yung uh, uh, speaker, we'll, we'll proceed with the other bills, no? so that we don't uh, uh, waste time of the others. We now proceed to uh, another creation of schools division office. Or sorry, creation of high school, uh, House Bill number four nine five four, um, authored by Congressman uh, Kari. Kong. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, Senator Gatsalian. Uh, good morning, Senator Ami Marcos. I am Attorney Rolando Banyares Domingo Jr. With your permission, your honors, respectfully representing Congressman Carl Nicolas Celiona Cari, the author of these bills of the 5th District of Leyte by Bay City. House Bill Numbers 4954 and 4955, seeking to establish national junior high schools in Manga Han by Bay City have been previously filed in the 17th Congress by Representative Jose Carlos El Cari, which were approved by the House of Representatives on May 27, 2019, and transmitted and received by the Senate of the Philippines on May 28, 2019. It is hoped that these bills will be passed in this present Congress, Your Honors. The establishment of Maganhan Junior High School and Punta Junior High School seeks to address the lack of junior high schools of those barangays since for the longest time the children of the barangay and the neighboring barangays have been traveling six to eight kilometers every school days to Bye Bye National High School in order to pursue their secondary education. This has led them to incur travel and food expenses and expose them to safety and health risks, which may be remedied by the creation of a junior high school near their, their respective barangays, your honors. These proposed measures aim to do justice to the youth of Barangays Maganhan and Punta, 
and its neighboring barangays by providing them the opportunity to liberate themselves from illiteracy and eventually upgrade their social and economic status without compromising their safety and well-being. With this, Your Honors, we are sponsoring these bills and sana may, may sakatuparan na po. Thank you, Senator Gachalian. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Uh, again, we call on uh, Yusek Jess for their comments. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, we do recognize the importance of the establishment of the junior high school. I think, uh, if I recall correctly, our comment there is that if there is a uh, elementary school there, we might as well uh, convert it into an integrated school to offer a uh, junior high school so that we can uh, follow the cohort pop. Uh, attorney, uh, meron ba doong uh, elementary school? And have you considered the comment of uh, Yusek Jess of instead of creating a separate high school, uh, create an integrated school? Um, I think, Senator, uh, medyo malayo kasi ano, kahit gawin po natin na, na gawing integrated school yung elementary na nandun, Ganon din po kasi magiging dati ang magiging effect kasi ang ang distance so may meron pa ring distance constraint. So we we are we are proposing your honor to, to do a separate uh, high school so that uh, ma-cure pa rin natin yung defect na distance distance constraints your honor. Is it correct that the nearest high school is 5.2 kilometers? Yes your honors. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, malayo yan, ha? It's a very, very yeah, malayo nga. Oh, yes, then, Your Honor. Um, uh, it's not an easy walk uh, every morning. Yes, Your Honor. And, um, we agree. And how many students will it cater, uh, Attorney? How many high school students will it cater? Uh, actually, uh, Your Your Honor, Your Honor uh, that would be uh, more than uh, 1,500 to 2,500, Your Honor. High school students. Yes, Your Honor. It is a big uh, barangay, Your Honor. Ah, it's a nalaki, ah? it's a Yes, very... Your Honor. Okay. Uh, then I see, I see the need to really create uh, uh, a separate high school uh, for that area because of the distance from the nearest school and also the student population. And yes, in, Your Honor. Uh, going by our experience also in Valenzuela, we have a, we have a barangay which is very far from the city center and uh, uh, students initially you know they used to walk uh, close to about ganyan, almost six to seven kilometers to high school and maraming dropouts we noticed that we uh, were incur encountering a lot of dropouts because of the distance pag bumabaha or bumabagyo so i see the necessity of putting uh, a separate high school so that they can cater uh, to that barangay and to the neighboring barangays in that area. Um, Thank you. Question is now, DepEd is the compliance, no? Because again, it, uh, the O40 is very strict with the compliance, and uh, I just want to know from uh, DepEd whether uh, this have this this proposal have complied with the documentary requirements. Mr. Chair, I'm joined right now by uh, our, uh, unfortunately, not the regional director of Region A but rather uh, one of the officers of Region 8. This is uh, Eleanor Calumpiano, uh, if uh, she can be recognized, Mr. Chair. Yusek, is she uh, authorized to, um, to comment on the measure? The question, Paul, with regards to the uh, documentary requirements, Paul. Okay, okay. Yeah, we recognize Ms. Eleanor. Ma'am, you're recognized. Yes, good morning. Go ahead, Pa. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am the representative of the Director Olimpo. So, with regard to Maganhan National High School, to the proposed establishment of Maganhan, 
Oh, well, uh, we have already issued a regional... Ma'am, ma can, can you please speak louder? Hindi ho namin marinig. Ah, sorry. Pakilapit na lang ho sa mic. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, she's the attorney po of Region 8. Okay. Uh, attorney, uh, can we... Ma, ma, you're coming in very uh, soft. Uh, please uh, speak louder. Okay, okay. Yes, uh -huh. With regard to Maganhan, am I already clear? Yes, yes that, that's uh, yeah, yan po. Okay, am I clear? Okay, so Deputy June, June 8 has already issued a uh, memorandum number 161, series of 2020, approving uh, Maganhan National High School. So that means the, the school is compliant with the requirements of DepEd established in the establishment of a national high school. So, in other words, attorney, the House Bill number 4924 complied with the requirements of the requirements. Hello. Uh, attorney, uh, uh, yes, uh, mean that uh, House Bill uh, number uh, 4954 uh, has complied with complied requirements under DOF? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Attorney. Thank Again, you, I would like to manifest uh, uh, on record that, on we, record that we, we don't have in our possession in the requirements uh, under DO4. Uh, in fact, in the list of in requirements, list of we have one. Uh, you map lang. Uh, you map lang. So, but so, but the present the manifestation, present of, manifestation of, of Dep Ed uh, through the representative, uh, we will approve this measure uh, subject to the submission of uh, requirements um, by Dep Ed and also by the House of Representatives. Again, this measure has been transmitted to the Senate by the House. And we will um, uh, assume that uh, the requirements have been fulfilled uh, by the House of Representatives and by the Ed at that level. So we will approve this subject to, subject to compliance of the compliance documents of the, under the DO40. Under the DO40. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. And then again, and then again uh, we go to House uh, Bill 4955. Again, sponsored by Congressman uh, Harry. Yes, Your Honor. I'm also a first speech that I've made. Attorney Domingo. Attorney Domingo. Yes, Your Honor. I'm, I'm also a speech that I made a while ago. I have a simple question. A simple question. Uh, how far is it away from the Malapit? Actually, Your Honor. Actually, Your Honor. Attorney. Attorney. Uh, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor. Uh, yes. Gano kalayo po ang pinakalayo po ang high school? Sa punta. Sa punta. Really? Really? Attorney Domingo. Attorney Domingo. Uh, uh, yung distance, Your Honor, it's the same. It's the same distance, Your Honor, from 5.7 kilometers to 6.1 kilometers, Your Honor. That's the nearest high school. Yes, Your Honor. And what's the population po of uh, what's the student uh, population for this high school in that barangay? Uh, barangay particular. Barangay, Your Honor, siguro nasa 900, Your Honor. 900 to so 950, Your Honor. Ah, malaki rin, ha? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Um, Yusek Mateo, any comments po? Yeah, again, we do recognize the need of uh, establishing a school there. Uh, but not bottom line kasi po yung kwan, eh, mga requirements niya as you uh, consistently uh, mentioned. Again, uh, if uh, you will recognize uh, attorney, uh, from Region uh, 8, no? because they're the ones reviewing all the documents. Yes, Attorney. Um, 
Colombian, uh, you're recognized. This is in relation to um, House Bill Number 4955, the creation of Punta Junior High School. Attorney. Attorney. Hello. 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 Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh with regard to Punta National Junior High School, based on the evaluation report of our uh assigned personnel at the quality assurance division. Uh, the, the application is now pending. Uh, considering that uh, it, it has not complied, I think, with one of the requirements, that is the school site. So there is no clear school site now uh, for the construction of the uh, UV. So that is so, yun, wala pa pong approval ng regional due to that. A uh, lacking requirement. Attorney, I, if I understand you correct, walang school site? Walang, yes, wala atang clear na, na, na pinpoint na, na site. Pero other requirements are complied with. Yun lang, yung parang hindi lang ata ma-determine saan uh, yung school site. As per okay. this report po. So, uh, attorney, what, uh, saan ipapatay? Yun yung simple question eh. Uh, that, that's fine, sir. Uh, I only base uh, the information from the evaluation report of the quality assurance division, sir. Uh, Your Honor. Um, but uh, I think uh, the LGU is uh, very supportive also. And so they are actually uh, coordinating with the LGU for this matter. So ultimately, uh, this uh, uh, application will be approved uh, as long as there uh, are clear school site. Okay, Attorney Domingo, any comments on that? No, uh, apparently, wala pang school site. Uh, we have to check on that, uh, Your Honor, because uh, I believe uh, we have mapped out mapped out already uh, 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 a place for. For building a school site, Your Honor, but we, we will have to coordinate with the uh, with the DepEd, with DepEd, Your Honor. Uh, I think we have a map of the Honor, uh, the a place for building the school site, Your Honor. Yeah, Attorney, this is very vital to the approval of this bill because once we approve this measure, the next step is to appropriate funds to build the school. But if there will be no identified site. Yeah. Then the funds will be in limbo. Will be beating your funds. No, you have you have money for the school, but you don't have land to build the school on. So it's important that we have uh, identified, secured, and in possession the land on which the school will be built on. So that is a very important component. And I understand from uh, uh, DepEd Region Eight representative, see si Attorney Lampian that the uh, school site is still unclear. Am I correct, Attorney Lampian? Yes, yes, Your Honor. So we, with that, uh, Attorney Domingo, uh, we will defer the approval of this bill, uh, House Bill Number 4955. And um, I suggest you coordinate with uh, Region 8, um, the uh, division school, the, reg uh, the regional office. <laughs> Uh, our decision to the documentary submissions. Okay, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you, Your Honor. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you for your time. And uh, we go so we defer House Bill number 4955, uh, and we go back to House Bill number 5740. By Congressman Mangawang. Hopefully, okay na ho yung mikropono nyo. Kong. Yeah, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, can you hear me now? Clear. Loud and clear. Mr. Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair and uh, the members of this honorable committee. Sorry po sa at aming ano, audio uh, kanina. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, this bill 
uh, which seeks to separate the uh, Tabuk City National High School, Bantay Extension in Barangay Bantay, City of Tabuk, province of Kalinga from its mother school, the Tabuk City National High School, and convert it into a separate and independent national high school to be known as uh, Bantay National High School. This is actually a refiled bill from the 17th Congress, Mr. Chair, which has reached the Senate, but has not been enacted into, into law due to time constraint during the last Congress. Mr. Chair, uh, the author would uh, earnestly ask and humbly ask uh, the Honorable Committee to approve this uh, bill, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Yes, yes, uh, uh, Congressman, we uh, hear your uh, plea. Uh, you suggest any comments? Yeah, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, I, uh, Mr. Chair, if you would like to recognize our, there are two uh, SDSS here, uh, Federico Martin or Irene Angwai. They are uh, the officials of the uh, division. They may be recognized, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, we recognize the uh, local representatives of either one can speak on the matter of compliance. Anyone from the local DepEd? Sino ang gusto magsalita? Sino ang uh, sa local DepEd po? Sa Kalinga? Uh, from Tabok City, uh, SDO, uh, I can see the, but I don't see the person. Um, they're, they're on, Mr. Chair. Si, um, yeah. Miss Irene, okay. ang why? Yes. Yeah, nandiyan po. Yes. Ma'am Irene, you're recognized? Yes, good morning po. Um, Good morning to all. Uh, we, with regards to the uh, requirements under uh, DepEd Order 40, all of these were already uh, submitted and transmitted by uh, the concerned persons to the higher offices. So we have, uh, we have complied with all the requirements of this book for the separation of Bantay National High School uh, Bantay National High School from Tabuk City National High School. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ma'am Angway. Uh, and I also understand from Kong uh, Manawang that uh, this has been approved in the last Congress. It was never yes. uh, approved here in the Senate. So again, my presumption is Documentary requirements were already fulfilled during the last Congress. Uh, definitely, I reviewed all the documentary requirements. And um, uh, um, unfortunately, time was uh, the constraint during those during the 17th Congress. Uh, with that statement, ma'am, uh, the support of uh, DepEd, uh, we will approve the bill uh, subject to um, compliance. Again, I'd like to put on record that uh, House Bill Number 5740, uh, which reached the Senate. Uh, however, we don't have any requirements in our possession. Um, so we will just await from DepEd. Um, uh, to give us the documentary requirements, and we will also await from the House of Representatives to give us the documentary requirements. Ma'am Angway, uh, coordinate the lang po sa amin committee secretary. We will also coordinate with you so that uh, we will be finished with the document. Na emails, and an email for the naho. Yes, pa. Yes, Mr. Chair. Para mabilis you sa kahit na scan and email lang kami na bahala magcompile kung compile di. Yeah, so again, we approve House Bill number 5740, subject to the submission of the documents. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, maraming salamat po sa pubinsa ng uh, Kalinga po, uh, Senator uh, West Katsalian. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we now go to the last 
um, bill, and this is House Bill number 4953. Uh, this is to declare Balangay as the National Boat of the Philippines, authored by uh, uh, Congressman um, Fortun. You have the floor to sponsor uh, the measure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Uh, good morning to our distinguished chairman. He's a former colleague in the House and one of our most productive members then. Uh, Senator Ivey, uh, good morning as well, uh, as well to our fellow members of uh, the House here present and uh, our resource persons and guests. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this measure, uh, which we call the Balangay Bill, is long overdue. It was approved on second reading by the House of Representatives in the 16th Congress and also approved on third and final reading by the House uh, and transmitted to the Senate in the 17th Congress, but was overtaken by events uh, leading to the 2019 elections. Currently, Mr. Chairman, this is the farthest uh, Balangay Bill has sailed and reached. Not only has it been uh, transmitted to the Senate, but already being taken up uh, in your committee. And for this, we are very thankful to the distinguished chairman for having this included in the agenda. Sir Chairman, this measure seeks to declare an ancient boat uh, known as the Balangay, which is a testament to the early Filipinos' uh, boat building uh, genius and seafaring expertise as the national boat of the Philippines. Uh, the Balangay was the first ever uh, wooden watercraft to be excavated in the Southeast Asia, demonstrating our ancestors' uh, advanced aptitude in <coughs> building boats designed for for long distance navigation and sailing them to the high seas. Uh, found only in the Philippines, where a flotilla of the ancient boat exists, the Balangay was utilized by our ancestors to engage in and maintain trade relations not only with countries and empires in the Southeast Asia, but also as far as China. The extensive utilization of this boat, Mr. Chair, uh, for trade purposes, confirms the active involvement of our early Filipinos in robust uh, commercial activities in Asia as early as the 10th and 11th centuries. The technology used in building this boat is unique to the Balangay, uh, the building of this boat was done without the use of blueprints, and the technology was thought to be made from one generation to another <clears throat> using an ancient technique that has been preserved, and uh, I think until now is still being employed by boat makers of the Cebuto Island. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as demonstrated by our ancestors, uh, building and sailing the Balangay uh, entail solidarity, harmony, and courage among boat builders and seafarers. It is for this reason, Mr. Chairman, that this is now being used by the Philippine government for decades already to refer to the smallest political unit, now known as the barangay. The balangay thus symbolizes the Filipino community's character of unity, cooperation, um, courage, determination, and resilience. In 2010, Mr. Chairman, a group of Filipinos whom we hail as among the heroes of our time, uh, led by Yusek Art Valdez, embarked on an ambitious project of retracing the seafaring route of our ancestors aboard the Balangay. They built uh, three replicas and sailed them to different parts of the Southeast Asia. And the most recent uh, voyage, Mr. Chair, was to China to celebrate 600 years of the voyage of the Balangay uh, to that country. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we, we need a symbol for the country. Uh, we need a symbol for the smallest communities, for, for the smallest political unit of the country, which is the Balangay. And uh, this is to only formalize this long recognition already, Mr. Chairman, because no less than our laws, our constitution already uh, call our smallest political unit uh, the barangay, which is uh, which comes from the the word balangay. And Mr. Chairman, uh, in in 1987, uh, uh, then President Corazon Aquino issued Presidential Proclamation Number 86, entitled "Declaring the Balangays in the Vicinities of Butuan City 
national cultural treasures and the sites where these balangays are found, archaeological sites, in accordance with sections 3C and 3J, respectively, of Republic Act number 4846 as amended, otherwise known as the Cultural Properties Preservation and Protection Act, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in this, uh, uh, for, these, for, for these reasons, Mr. Chairman, uh, we appeal to the committee to approve this bill and uh, finally have a symbol uh, for our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Kong. Thank you for the very inspiring and uh, um, very inspiring uh, opening speech and very inspiring sponsorship speech. Uh, definitely, Balangay is at history. And um, we hear that a lot, especially if you're in um, public service because of the uh, smallest political unit of our land, which is the barangay. However, I was reading the transcript in the house. No, apparently, to my surprise, uh, the comment of um, uh, the National Museum representative is the word barangay cannot be directly linked to the word barangay. Um, can uh, you enlighten me? Because I, I, you you were there at the hearing. Uh, can you enlighten us on that uh, on that discussion? Because I always thought that barangay came from the word balangay, uh, and um, I was doing my own research. Apparently, the mode of transport, the most popular mode of transportation back then, uh, was the balangay, you know? and it was transporting families, transporting communities. It was the only mode of transportation that created our present civilization. Um, but then again, I was quite surprised when they made a comment that it was uh, never proven that it came from that word. But uh, can you enlighten us on, on that uh, discussion, Kong Lawrence? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, as, as far as I can remember, I think uh, the National Museum, if, if ever the, uh, it made that comment, probably uh, submitted a uh, a position paper on the issue, but uh, I do not remember uh, National Museum, particularly uh, Jeremy Barnes, uh, uh, stating that manifestation before the committee uh, verbally, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't remember uh, since the 16th Congress, they've been uh, uh, supporting the measure to declare uh, this as a national vote, but I don't particularly remember, Mr. Chairman, that comment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, about seven of the uh, of the of the people uh, deeply involved in the in the Balangay Boyaj project are with us uh, here today, and uh, perhaps, Mr. Chairman, we can also hear from them. Ito po yung transcript. No, this is the transcript from uh, August twenty eighth uh, hearing, uh, two thousand nineteen, in the House. And in the transcript, uh, let me do, just quote the transcript. Uh, somebody asked him, no, to the query if the barangay, mm -hmm. the smallest political unit in the country, was derived from the from barangay. Dr. Barnes responded that the National Museum has no way to validate this claim, although this was well-established tradition handed down since Spanish time. So, although he is speaking in behalf of National Museum, um, but uh, common knowledge dictates that uh, the barangay came from Balanghay. Nevertheless, I'm not a historian or an expert in history, uh, and uh, but I was quite surprised now with this with this statement. But we have invited some experts to shed light on this matter. Matter and um, uh, thank you, Kong, Kong uh, Fortune, Kong Lawrence, for um guiding us on who to invite uh, and 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 uh, shed light on um, this proposal uh, first we call on mr uh, alejandre of the national commission for the culture of the arts ncca and caa um ed any any comments and uh, any any uh, opinion on the matter good morning mr chair uh Senator Gachalian and uh, Senator Marcos and to the proponent, uh, Congressman uh, Lawrence Fortun and, and the rest of the congressmen there and our guests. Uh, magandang umaga, may guntag sa tanan. Uh, 
It is uh, regarding House Bill number 4953 and act declaring in uh, the Balangay as a national vote of the Philippines. Our official position from the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, may we respectfully reiterate our previous comments made on this uh, proposed legislation. First and foremost, we would like to thank our honorable representatives for jointly authoring this bill. The commission acknowledged the historical and cultural significance of the Balangay, as well as the ideals, values, and tradition it represents. We find nothing uh, legally objectable in this bill, Mr. Chair, as long as it is clear in the act that Balangay shall refer to all discovered and soon to be discovered Balangay in the Philippines and not solely the Butuan boats or the Balangays in Butuan. We will advocate this passage, Mr. Chair. Nevertheless, the Balangays in the vicinities of Butuan City declared the national cultural treasures in accordance with the proclamation as mentioned by Congressman uh, Fortuna a while ago, uh, Proclamation 86 in the 1987 by former President Corazon C. Aquino. The, this is the highest category, Mr. Chair, given to the cultural property, no? are continuously safeguarded and conserved, no? uh, protected, preserved, and promoted by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, particularly of the National Museum of the Philippines by virtue of Republic Act Number 10066 or the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009, Mr. Chair. Uh, other than this, we defer also, Mr. Chair, to the wisdom of our affiliated cultural agencies, such as National Museum of the Philippines and the National Historical Commission of the Philippines for their necessary needs. But again, Mr. Chair, on behalf of the National Commission for Culture in the Arts, we will advocate uh, for the approving the, on this uh, passage, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, EDL. EDL, just clarificatory. Um, you, you mentioned in your position paper that it should uh, refer to all the discovered uh, balangays in the Philippines. Uh, educate me, no? and I apologize for my ignorance. The balangay is a mode of transportation throughout the Philippines. Hindi lang siya ginagamit, let's say, in parts of Agusan or parts of Mindanao. Is it a, a common mode of transportation throughout the Philippines? Uh, Mr. Chair, way back, uh, itong balangay na to, yes, you're, you're right. You're correct. This is the mode of transportation. Uh, ito yung ginagamit nila for barter, no? If they go... Uh, across the other countries no at saka dito po sa Pilipinas no so yun yung sa amin lang din na, uh, hindi lang po sa butuan no yung uh, gumagawa nito meron din tayo part in uh, Hulu uh, Sulu Mr. Chair so yun yung aming uh, position din na uh, hindi lang po uh, doon sa butuan no if ever we could also discover uh, itong mga balangay boats but other parts in the Philippines also, Mr. Chair, uh, with regards with this uh, <coughs> Balangay as a national vote of the Philippines. <coughs> so what you're saying is the Balangay is a generic brand for this type of boat, for this type of vessel, meaning there will be other Balangays being used, let's say, in the zone or in Visayas. But for this type of design, uh, they call it the Balangay. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, when I went to Butuan last March for for the uh, culture arts and cultural meeting that time, so pumunta ako sa National Museum. Uh, uh, they would uh, ex uh, explain to me about the Balangay. No, sabi nila daw is. Uh, nanggaling yung mga workers from Butuan and then a few years later pumunta daw sa Sulo no uh, Hulo along the uh, those areas so meron din gumagawa 
doon. Until now, meron pa rin gumagawa doon sa area na yun, Mr. Chair. Um, we'll go back to that, uh, ED. Uh, don't leave yet. But we invited other experts also, as requested by Congressman Lawrence. Uh, I think these other experts can also shed light to us on the um, on 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 the uh, history of Balangay, uh, Mr. Valdez. A voyage of Balangay, Mr. Valdez. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Gatchalian, uh, Senator uh, Aimi, uh, Congressman Forton, and uh, the distinguished members of the panel. Uh, it's an honor to be a part of this hearing. And let me just briefly uh, share with you uh, why I put, I breathe life and meaning into this Balangay. Right after Mount Everest, we still have our adrenaline hanging around us. So we thought, of why not trace the migration of our forefathers, where we came from, which is mainland Asia. So, and this has something to do at the same time where perhaps where the word Malangai. When they can build a bigger boat, family, family or families rode on that boat. And as they sailed around, when they reached uh, the, the vast Pacific and Indian Ocean, or like here in the Philippines, they, they stayed along riverine, riverines, along the bank of the river. And they, they, the boat served as a houseboat. So it's not only one family, but at times, depends upon the size of the, of the boat, several families. Perhaps that's where the gathering of families, the word barangay came from. Now, the word balangay is, uh, the, uh, the boat can be found. It is, I, I agree with you, Mr. Senator, that it is generic. Somewhere in Cagayan, it's, it is called barangay, barangay. Somewhere in the Visayas, it is called Balangay, but in Butuan, it is called Balangay. But the hull shape is generic. So in a way that reflects it to be a national boat. But uh, when we built the boat, uh, because we would like to see really that this Balangay uh, as used by our fathers, uh, we cannot find uh, boat builders. I tried to look around, we cannot find it. Why? And then only through the National Museum, they directed me to Tawi-Tawi in the island of Cebuto or in Batanes. So why at the extremities, they still keep that culture of building boats? Because colonialism discourages us. So in a way, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, we built this boat. It's a way to retrieve back that proud maritime heritage of our forefathers. The, the Philippines and archipelago, we are more water than land. A real wealth lies in our maritime domain. That's why the boat is symbolic of that maritime culture. But that has gone and lost because colonialism made us think that we're a land-based people. That's why we're so cramped up in Metro Manila when we have so much vast uh, areas outside of these uh, land-based areas. We made to think as a land-based people when we're really a maritime people. And the Balangay simply Restore us back to the proud historical and maritime culture, which we hope, uh, Mr. Chair, you'll be able to put it together because it will reflect the proud maritime culture of our people. That's why the Philippines is the number one supplier of seafarers. Seafaring is in our DNA, and they rode on that generic hull called the Balangay. Of course, I can talk more, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, but you can just ask me some questions later because there are other uh, members of the panel. But indeed, it, uh, as I said, we sailed for 18 months. We've been through 12 typhoons and LPAs. But the fact that I'm here to share with you a story showed the seaworthiness of that Malangay. And it is just fitting that we put it in a pedestal that Filipinos can relate themselves, that the Balangay is their national boat. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. I do agree. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Valdez, on your comment that the Philippines can be a maritime powerhouse. In fact, uh, and, and my staff can attest to this, uh, was uh, putting together a maritime promotions industry law because I really believe that the Philippines can be a maritime powerhouse at this present age. 
Um, if you look at uh, Greece during those times, the wealthiest and the most uh, richest tycoons came from Greece. And it came from Southern Greece in which they were the maritime powerhouse during the 60s and the 70s. Uh, the family of Oasis, which is one of the richest families in the world, uh, was a maritime uh, uh, entrepreneur. You know? He built boats, he had uh, shipping lines, he had shipping containers. And Greece in the southern part is more or less like the Philippines. You know? It's a archipelagic, uh, um, it, it, it looks like an archipelagic uh, uh, feature. And uh, that's why I really believe that the Philippines can be a maritime powerhouse. And uh, just look at our um, uh, the number of, of compatriots, the number of Filipinos working in the maritime industry in the world. It's already reaching uh, more than half of the maritime personnel working in cruises, working in container lines, or all Filipinos. Ang hindi lang natin naabot yung kapitan eh. Tsaka yung mga matataas na rango. Pero if you look at the mechanics, if you look at the um, the ones maintaining the boats, they're all Filipinos. And I really believe that uh, the maritime industry is a huge potential for our country. And uh, I'm happy to learn today that uh, it draws back to even way before, you know, during uh, pre-Spanish age, that uh, the maritime industry is really part of our um, uh, power, not only part of our culture, but part of our economic uh, uh, development. So uh, the proposal of, of Kong Lawrence draws a very clear line between our potential and what we were once before. So I really agree that uh, uh, the, the, the maritime sector is one sector that we can be good at and we should uh, draw inspiration from our forefathers. Um, let me call on Dr. Ted Esguera of Voyage, Voyage of the Balangay, also this from the same group, Dr. Ted. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, Senator Salian, and also Senator Amy Marcos, ma'am. And good morning to the members of the committee and to all Congress members, particularly to our uh, comrade in Balangay, uh, Congressman Bortun, Dao Bortun. And I would like to greet my fellow uh, exhibition uh, leaders and members. Uh, my position is uh, like this. Same as your... Uh, statement a while ago, sir. Balangay is like a generic term. It's a boat. It's a of boat. Um, I described to it. I can describe it and I'll uh, transliterate it in English. He saw our teeming and gleaming with ships and boats of different shapes and sizes. So, ibig sabihin noon, bago pa ang Wright Brothers nakagawa ng aeroplano, when you rule the seas, you rule the earth. So, I'm gonna bring you back again to the 12th century during the Sri Vijaya. And then, uh, it went into Majapahit, wherein uh, Nusantara, the word Nusantara is mentioned, and it was in its uh, glorious stature. We are archipelago, including Indonesia, uh, before we were divided by the colonials. And we were using boats our seas became our highway, and we are really the maritime people. Our scholars, our soldiers, traders need those boats, and even houses, particularly in Sulu, they call it lepak, uh, are, are houseboats. So when the Magellan reached the shores, uh, was met by uh, one uh, by the leader of Nasawa, si ano Rahasiao. And then he even saw a boat, Sir Chair, with 100 rowers on one side. Isipin mo anong classing boat yun with 100 rowers on one side. Ibig sabihin yung ating maritime glory nandun na. And then I was, uh, I was, uh, I, I'm being um, brought back into some terms like, for example, Ibanag facing the Pacific. They have Balangay, they call Birai. Another tribe call it Biwang. So there are lots of names, Garay, Salipsipan, 
depende kung ano ang kanyang uh, usage. Pwede ba siya pang marauding, pang uh, like a seat of government, pag malakihan. And uh, we have perfected some sort of uh, um, creating the hall. That's why we were, tamed as, we were termed as the Vikings of Asia. And when Magellan reached uh, our islands, doon siya sa Giwan, yung Pumonhon, uh, pinuntahan siya ng mga ancestors natin sailing on a prahu. Itong prahu, maririnig nyo na lang po ito sa Malaysia, sa Indonesia. And this is another balangay boat wherein the team of Magellan Uh, nagkasakit sila sa ng scurvy because of vitamin C deficiency while crossing the Great Pacific Ocean. And uh, they were treated there. Nakita mo yung advancement with the boat. Now, we are so advanced in so many ways. We are using spices. Uh, we are, we are uh, our form, art form are quite advanced. Kaya nga, nung si Beatles, if you remember Mr. George Air, nung nakasagsagan ng kasikatan nila, pumunta sila sa India kasi medyo predictable na yung music. To understand Oriental music. So going back to our maritime greatness, symbols become a subliminal uh, uh, language to people. For example, when you talk about Russia, they have the bear. You talk about the US, they have the bald eagle. You talk about the Middle East or the Islamic countries, they use the color uh, like green or strong green. Tayo, wala tayong national symbol. Using this balangay will be a symbol na we were so great before so that it will rekindle something in our destroyed psyche when we were destroyed by our colonials. Na meron mo lang tayong aapakan ng church here, ang ating mga kabataan, na I was great. My ancestors were great. Riding in the great boat, crossing across, uh, the treacherous Pacific and even Indian Ocean. So, with this uh, uh, proposal to make it as a symbol, uh, I hope that we will really put into our bring back the greatness of the Philippines by starting with symbolism. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and the members, for uh, giving us the opportunity to tell you something of the greatness of the Filipino people. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ted. Uh, we now call on Dr. Oh, Mr. Fung Yu, Team Balangay. Hi. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, Konlo, and uh, to everyone present. Uh, may opening statement sana po ako, kaya lang. Uh, Halos lahat na na-mention na ni uh, Mr. Advaldez at ni Hong Fortune. Let me just put a few more facts in context. Ano? Uh, yung original Balangay book natin, they were first unearthed in uh, Butuan no? in 1976. Now, ang oldest carbon dated was around 320 AD. But then, itong study, there's a newer study made that based the age of the Balangay in around late 9th or early 10th century. Still, it's more than 500 years before Magellan even set foot in our soil, no? And uh, of course, the Malangay molds were eventually the clear natural cultural treasures. But at the same time, the first Malangay replica namin na ginawa during uh, 2009, it was also declared as an important cultural property by the National Museum. Yun po yung naka-display dun sa, sa site ng TAF for four years bago siya tinanggal for restoration. Now, uh, currently, uh, there are actually uh, two cultures who can actually build the Balangay boat. One is, of course, yung mga Sama de Laya sa Tawi-Tawi, si Sito si Tangkay, and of course, the Ibatan sa Batanes. So, sa, gaya na sinabi ni Sir Art, extreme north and extreme south because they were uh, less touched by colonization. Now, uh, Jose Rizal once said no, uh, in his essay, Philippines, a century hence, no, uh, he said, perhaps the people will revive their maritime and commercial activities for which the islanders have a natural aptitude and free once more like a bird that leaves his cage, like the flower that returns to the open air, they will recover their good old qualities 
which they are losing little by little. And again, become lovers of peace, gay, lively, smiling, hospitable, and fearless. So, the National Quincentino Committee last year has chosen the Balangay as one of the teams in the world of our ancestors. This was uh, Ginawasa last year during the 500 countdown for the curriculum for primary and secondary school levels. No? And uh, also, the commission uh, preparation manual on how to build a Balangay as an intangible cultural heritage. Kasi pawala na siya. So, dalawang culture na lang ang nakakagawa nito. No? So, we let us try to retain that. And lastly, uh, if ever the bill will, uh, will pass, we try to encourage coastal provinces or regions to build their own Balangay books. So, this could be like a catalyst for a national Balangay festival, uh, an annual event that can promote solidarity of culture, maritime consciousness, and sailing as a sport, which has also the potential to be an international attraction in support of tourism and the environment. No? Uh, so it is our fervent with Sana uh, for this bill's passing. The Balangay symbolizes our collective dreams as a people. The boats are part of our national patrimony. They are a reminder of our grandeur from a time long ago. And may they serve again as a reminder for every Filipino's aspiration for a brighter future. So one people, one nation, one book, tayo iisang bangka. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fung Yu. Uh, let me also acknowledge and recognize um, Mr. George Navara of Butuan Global Forum. Mr. Navara, and Jamba Hukayo. A pleasant Thursday morning to all. Morning. Can I, morning. Be, can I be heard now? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, first of all, I find it necessary to address the contention or the testimony of the National Museum about the source of the Barangay word. I don't think the National Museum would say outright that the term Barangay could not have come from Balangay because it is the historians who traced how Barangay came from the word Balangay. Unfortunately for us Filipinos, it was a foreign historian, Dr. William Henry Scott, who wrote two books about Barangay, where the source and origin of the term came from. Actually, the Barangay is an Austronesian boat. It is not just a Philippine boat. It was the boat used by Austronesian peoples during their waves of migrations around Asia. The Balangay is more of a boat building technology that is unique. The only boat building technology that puts the planks first before, before the structure, the ribs. In that sense, the boat building technology used by our ancestors in constructing the Balangay would be the only one of its kind in this part of the world not only in the Philippines. Studies before showed that the first Balangay remnant dug up in Butuan was dated at 320 AD. But later scientific studies conducted by Dr. Mai Laksina proved that the Balangay found in Butuan, which remains to be the oldest one, was actually dated from 787 to 984. However, no boat has been found to be older than that in this part of the world. It was a barangay relic or wreckage found in Indonesia that was dated centuries, centuries later. So our barangay, our barangay remains to be the oldest of its kind found in the Philippines. In China, the Daos are the, the bigger ships 
the smaller ships are called uh i'm sorry the bigger ships are called junks then the smaller ships were called the daos and the kakams were built during the song dynasty in 1960. our balangais were built earlier than the chinese junks the chinese daos zaos and the chinese uh the other chinese smaller boats The Balangais traveled as far as the Easter Islands. They had different names. Some Balangai boats reached as far as Madagascar. If some of the relics of these boats rested for centuries under layers of soil with anaerobic conditions where there is no oxidation, those relics can be found, which will prove that the Balangai is not only a Philippine boat, it is an Austronesian boat, but it is only in the Philippines where nine Balangay relics were found. They just happened to be in Butuan. But continuing scientific searches will prove that there, were, there are Balangays lying under the earth somewhere in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, more particularly likely to be in the Batanes and Tawi-Tawi Islands. In Batanes, they call their boats Tataya and Palua. In Sulu, they call their boats Lepa, Basnig, but they all were built using the Balangay technology. In that sense, they're all Balangay boats. The Visayans were known for their Karakoa. These are the boats used for Pangangayaw. Pangangayaw is for rings. We were the, we were the most feared islanders in our part. The Chinese in South China were afraid and scampered for, for safety away from the shores when the Caracoas of these islanders from, 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 the, from what we now call Philippines would arrive. Pangangayaw is raiding, raiding for slaves and raiding for war. The Caracoas are Balangais built as warships with two, two rows of of, of cuttings used by the rowers and paddlers and by the soldiers in the other row. The point I am trying to make is that the Balangais are not only Philippine boats, they are actually Austronesian boats. But we must lay claim to the Balangai as our national boat because it was only in the Philippines that nine of these boats, a flotilla of Balangais, were dug up in the Philippines. There will be, soon be other relics found in most likely Batanes and Tawi-Tawi. In that sense, we can say that the Balangay truly symbolizes the Philippines' maritime heritage, the Philippines' maritime history, and the Philippines' maritime power. We in Team Balangay embarked on the voyage of the Balangay for the purpose of tracing the ancient roots of our seafaring ancestors. Create, creating awareness among our people, particularly the youth, in our rich maritime heritage, and instilling pride among the youth of our nation in our people's historic role in the maritime history, not only of the Philippines, not only of Asia, but of the world. We, in many ways, succeeded. When the Balai sailed around the Philippines, children, women and even old people would go to the shore to wait for the Balangay's arrival, which would show that our people are in dire need of some tangible, touchable symbol to which they can identify our country's aspirations in the area of maritime power. I can now pra practically say after 11 years of participation, close an active participation in the Balangay voyage that the Balangays have reached the status of a national symbol that the Philippines must now use to unite our people, to make us aware that we were once the maritime power of Asia, feared by most coastal peoples in this part of the world. So in that sense, I would like to say that the Balangay is where the word 
barangay came from. In Cagayan, even if they named the boat Tataya and Palo Paloa, when there are several of these boats docked together, those places were called Balangayan. You can check that with the old people of Cagayan Islands, the islands of Cagayan and in Batanes. They called the assembly of boats on the, on the coast as Balangayan. In Sulu and Tawi-Tawi, they have the Lepa, they have the Basnig, but they all refer to them as Balangais because of the boat building technology. So may I submit that Team Balanghai recommends with all the strength that we could master that this House Bill of Congressman Lawrence Fortu be approved so that the Philippines can have a symbol of its maritime power and a boat that will carry the hopes of our people that in the years to come, our country will regain its maritime, its position as a maritime power in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Navarra. Uh, we are also joined by Attorney Josefa Sorera T of uh, Butuan Global Forum. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Attorney. Good, yeah. Thank you very much, Honorable Senator William Gatcholian, for inviting me. And may also give my greetings to Senator Aimee Marcos and to the rest of the members of the committee. Uh, I am here to reiterate the, uh, the plea for the immediate approval of this bill. I, I am not an expert on the history of, the mar of our maritime uh, stories, nor am I an, an expert on the science of boat building, but I am a teacher. I've been teaching law, and because I'm a member of Butuan Global Forum, I have seen the effect of the story of the Balangay, not only to my law students, but to my children. Uh, several years ago, at the start of the boat building, my little girl was part of that, and she learned a lot about that. This is a personal experience. There I saw how the Balangay has inspired the young to dream again of being brilliant, ingenious, being ingenious, and how they see the Balanghai as a unifying force. I teach legal ethics, Senator Gachalian, and I also teach uh, natural resources and environmental law. When I start my classes, I always talk about who the Filipino is. We have a lot of stories about who the Filipino is, but there is one thing lacking in our history, and that is the story that we are a people, the water people, in the words of, if I may say, if I may quote uh, Yusek Art Valdez, this is a story that is not so much emphasized, but this is a story that would really uh, inspire our people. Because a lot have already been said of our rich maritime history. I have seen that when I tell the story of the Balanghai to my students in law, you inspire them to take care of the waters. I've been teaching uh, environmental law, and they are inspired to take care of our water resources. And now, now is the time to take care of that water resources because our seas, our oceans are teeming with resources, and we have to protect that. So the Balangay boat will be there as an inspiration for our students, for our young, to take good care of the water, and to remind them that it is not true that we were we only were civilized when foreigners came here no we already had advanced technology that is the brilliance that will be a rem be a reminder to all of us if we have the balangay boat as our national boat because it reminds us that we have been brilliant not just today not just when our uh, when our colonizer came but even before that because of the advanced technology of the balangay I end there, I wouldn't add, but I will just say as a mother, as a teacher, I think it's high time. We pass this bill so that we have a symbol of how we are, how great our maritime history is, and that even we will still be great in the future if we are able to look back and learn more about our maritime history. We have to protect our waters. It unifies us, Senator Gatchalian. Thank you very much, and I hope the bill will be approved. 
Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Um, I have some questions, no? and unfortunately, we're, we were not joined by the National Historical Commission today. Um, but I will uh, just ask the experts, and anyone can answer this, but I will uh, uh, ask this uh, in particular to uh, Mr. Navarra. Uh, earlier, he mentioned that uh, the Balangay is a symbol of our maritime power uh, once upon a time. Um, Mr. Navarra, can you describe to me uh, what what made you say that? No, how was how was the Philippines a maritime power in the past, and uh, what were the events that led to that to the, to, to to the Philippines that made us a maritime power? What were the events that led to that? In the Senator Kitsalian, thank you for your question. In the area of trade and commerce, the Balanghais went to China, went to Champa, which was a vassal of China, to carry on trade relations. Because of the Balanghais, our country, our islands then, became a center of maritime, maritime trade in old Asia. When we talk of a naval force, the Balanghais, particularly through the Caracoas, were feared in coastal communities in South China and in other islands of the Philippines because the Caracoas were built mostly by people of Visayas and Mindanao. They're called Caracoas, but they're also Balanghais. They were feared because they were known to be raiders. Um, in, in blunt terms, mga pirates din yung mga ninuno natin. So ang piracy nila, they carried it through the Balangais in the form of the huge battleships called Karakoa. Wala tayong organized navy noon kasi tribal ang nature ng society. But yung mga boats natin, pag nakita na mga sampo, lima, nagtatakbuhan na yung mga nasa shores. There are continuing researches being made in China to look for accounts in Chinese annals where a balangay is actually described. But in 1400, 14, 1470, 1417, the balangays arrived in Beijing through the, Brand Canal, through the Grand Canal at the time. And they were given by the emperor a very big welcome. Unfortunately, on the way out of the Grand Canal, the Sultan of Sulu died. And the emperor insisted that he be buried in China with full honors that an emperor would get. They built him a one hectare tomb. And his descendants were given Chinese nationality. They are, they are now 21 generations of the older son and 19 generations of the younger son still living in that city and in that province. These are proofs that our Balangais carried the force that people respected. And in many ways, because the Balangais called Lepas were also houseboats, the, 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 the assembly of Balangais in one community would give that community the power to, re, to, to, to deter attacks against that coastal community. During the time of the Balangais, before the arrival of the Spaniards, just a display of the Balangais ducks on the coast would deter pirates and raiders from going to that community. In the Spanish times, they actually stopped or killed our boat, our Balangay technology, boat building technology. They had to use hamleting to protect the shores. In that sense, I would like to re restate the position that I had earlier said, uh, stated that our Balangays represented the naval power of the Philippines in trade and in war. Not the kind of full-scale war, but those little wars fought in islands and in communities. 
Because of the Balangais, nakilala tayo sa mga isla sa Asia. Hindi lang Balangais galing sa Pilipinas. Pati yung ibang Balangais. Kasi sa Indonesia, pag sumisigaw ang mga tao ng barangay, barangay, ibig sabihin nandiyan na yung mga raiders. Siguro mga taga-sulo na yon, Kasi ang Balangay nga, nasa Batanes, nasa Cagayan Valley, nasa Tawi-Tawi, nasa Sulu. Yung nasa Butuan, ang nakita relics. Pwede pa na hindi gawa sa Butuan yon. Nagpunta lang doon kasi ang Butuan, center of maritime trade at the time because of the gold in Butuan. So, and there are books to support my, what would be my theories now. Unfortunately nga, sulat ng mga foreign historians. William Henry Scott would tell us how the Barangay War started. There's a book by a Spanish friar about boat building technology that will show the prowess of our Balangay fleets. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who wants to comment uh, on that? I also want to ask no, uh, from the body, uh, what were the uh, major historical successes of the Balangay? Um, what were the historical significance, um, major historical significance of the Balangay? Uh, for example, was it involved in any uh, discovery? Was it involved in any economic development? Uh, see, Mr. Navarro mentioned about trade, but was it a major tool for any discoveries? Uh, I want to ask the body, no? any historical uh success or historical significance by the uh, barangay mr chair yes. I, yes yes mr. Uh, yes, go ahead. This, yeah. mr chair uh you know the the seafaring culture developed because we built the boat uh by having the boat uh, we were able to develop that kind of culture let me just cite you an example you remember when when uh, Magellan, uh, this was written by Pigafetta, when they arrived in, uh, they were fed, when they met uh, Raha Humabon, they were fed with maize. You remember that? They were fed with corn. You know, corn is not indigenous to the Philippines. Corn came from Latin America. When Magellan arrived here, they were fed with corn. What does it imply? We say, our forefathers may have crossed the Pacific long before the coming of the colonials, riding in a boat like this Balangay. You know, this has been uh, uh, shown by Professor Kurusho. You know, there is this black current that crossed the Pacific, just like the jet stream, according to the pilots. At a certain time of the year, the current goes to Latin America. At a certain time of the year, it goes back here. Somehow, because we were able to, be, to develop a boat, we developed that kind of seafaring culture. And that seafaring culture is in our DNA. Uh, let me concretely uh, share with you. Uh, me personally and my team, Dr. Ted and the rest of the Balangay team, are mountaineers. We're not even seafarers. But how did we learn how to sail? Because we have a boat and Without even any formal training, we sailed, trying to follow the, our forefathers when they sailed with those ancient boats. And we used, uh, we, we sailed with, with the wind. We called it powered by the wind and steered by the stars. The first time we built that Tiwata ng Lahe, uh, Mr. Chair, there was, we really have no nothing, no equipment. What we have is simply carriage that we are the inheritors of the maritime pride of our ancestors. So if you talk about, is there something significant that historically we can cite? Uh, no, the boat uh, was used by our forefathers, not only by the Filipinos, but by Astronesians. Because upon the, the advent of the Middle Age, they can build bigger boats. And they use that in order to inhabit the vast Pacific and Indian Oceans. The anthropological relics had shown that indeed the movement came from mainland Asia to reach 
the different islands of the Pacific and Indian Ocean. And they rode on a boat, which is a hull boat, which we called it the Balangay in our own language, although it's called different names for that matter, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, insight. Uh, any any more reaction from from the body? And then I have also another question, and this is a very basic question: Who invented the balangay? Which which um, culture or, or that time? Which uh, um, uh, tribe or? Sino ho ang nag-invent nito? Was it endemic here in the Philippines? Was it brought? I, I, I know before everyone was crisscrossing from Malaysia to Indonesia. Uh, but uh, from from your expert opinions, who invented this? This uh, this who invented Balangay? Mister, would yes, you allow me to speak again, Mister Chair? You know, the Astronesians, the Astronesians are the people that live in coastal mainland Asia. And what is unique about this boat, Mr. Chair, is that, you know, presently when you build a boat, isn't it, you, build, you put up a keel, and then you put up the ribs, and then after the ribs, you put up the siding or the walls, you know. That's how the present boat, it is called frame first construction. The keel, then the ribs, which is the frame, and then the wall deciding. Ang Balangay, it is shell, shell first construction. You have the kill, then they put up the planks. The ribs is the last one. The ribs is the last, or the frame is the last when they built the boat. And this boat is built without any, 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 any how do you call it, any design, any pattern. It is simply in the, the memory of the master builder. I think. The, the boat building came from our forefathers when uh, they built this boat to cross the, to, to leave the mainland Asia in those ancient times, Mr. Chair. Mr. Valdez, was it, was it developed here in the Philippines, that uh, technique? Or was Mr. it Chair. brought from, let's say, Malaysia? I remember before, it, people were crisscrossing the seas. Eh? So I'm just curious, lang, was it? Was it innovated and developed here in our country, or was it brought from Malaysia to our country, or to uh, to anywhere from from Asia? No? no, no. I think that there is commonality in the kind of boat, you say, chair. In other places, it's called kura kura. Here we called it karakua. So there is commonality uh, among the the Malay. You know, basically before we were called Filipinos, we were really a uh, Malay, Indo, we are a Malay Polynesian. So we built a boat of that kind. It's a generic boat, but it's as, a, as Judy Navarra mentioned, only in the Philippines, uh, an ancient relics can be found. So we are claiming it that indeed, uh, this is boat is really a, a product of that proud maritime history of our time. That's my next question, Mr. Valdez. Uh, Mm. Uh, can other countries claim that they invented this boat and it just washed washed up to our shore or or, or transferred technology to our shores? Uh, my my point of the matter is, uh, um, uh, of course, by declaring it a national boat, it means that this is endemic to us. No, uh, we we develop this technology, but uh, I just I'm just. Playing devil's advocate, wouldn't other countries say that this this technology is also from ours because people were moving around during those times? This is a Malay boat because if you look into that seventh uh, century or fourth century, uh, the uh, the European colonizers have not reached our shores. It's a Malay boat, and uh, we're part of that. Uh, the the great uh, Malayan race. Uh, you can find yes. that kind of boat in Malaysia, in Malaysia yes. or Indonesia. But the 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 ancient, the most, the oldest can only is found in in Butuan. So on that on that uh, on that note, we are claiming it to be our own boat. What we're saying is the oldest of all uh, balangay or the oldest 
Balangay boat ever discovered is here in the Philippines. It's in Butuan. Yes. So it it's it was, so so wala hong ibang na discover na balangay na ganito kaluma in other countries. Meron din I think you know the National Museum when we were doing a research mentioned that somewhere in the waters of uh, uh, of Hulu in Sulusi may may mga relics ng balangay boat down below na hindi pa na hindi pa na ina, hindi pa na angat. So it's not only in Butuan. There are other places that you can find this kind of boat. Uh, the, the National Museum has not yet uh, uh, gone into that uh, underwater uh, relics somewhere off uh, Hulu Island. But to date, it's it's uh, in, in, to date uh, only Butuan, uh, in relation to the world, has the oldest balangay. Yes, we are the, it's only in Butuan. Uh, it's a fleet of boats that are found in, in, in Butuan in 1976. And I think they're still uh, finding uh, additional boats. Uh, I, I think latest that it's a big boat. And on top of that big boat, there's a small boat. Uh, so which simply uh, uh, signify that Butuan is an ancient kingdom. That's why Butuanos are, at times they're proud to say there's, there was Butuan before the Philippines. So, so if you look into that, uh, originally it was straight 28, and now it's 7th century. You know, we're just, I think we're even just as old as the Vikings. And if you look at how the Vikings built their boat, it's also something, there's some similarity, except it is not fastened by dowels, pins and dowels. They, they saw it, they're sewing. Inatahe nila yung kanilang mga planks. Yun ang difference ng uh, Viking uh, boat. And of course, because uh, there's so much story about the Vikings, it becomes more popular. But our boat is just as old as the Vikings or even older. And totoo yun, at one time, we're the most feared in the whole of Southeast Asia. We raid, we raid natin pati yung mainland Asia. Eh. And these are the people there, mga Iranons, these are the people somewhere off uh, Sambuanga, that is the place where this great warrior uh, uh, sailors came from. Yeah, that we're, at one time, we're the, most, we're the most feared in this region. Anyone who wants to join in the topic, po, um, feel free to just raise your hands and uh, join in the topic. Okay. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Ted. Meron na kamute ho kayo. Um, I hear. We cannot hear you, Dr. Ted. Hello? Yes. Am I here? Yes, you can, uh, we can hear you now. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just would like to add to the statement of uh, Sir Art Barless, our expedition leader. Um, we, about the Kurusi or the Black Current. On the other side of the world, the Indian Ocean, uh, if you see also some features of people in Madagascar, uh, there are like a stock there or a certain population that look like us, no? Uh, because we've been sailing across Indian Ocean. Kaya nga po, nadala natin yung breed ng mga kabayo dito eh. Kasi kung titingnan natin yung distribution ng mga domesticated animals na when they're being domesticated, actually we don't grow horses here. So we have horses because we got them from somewhere in the Arabia. So this is the extent from left to right, no? when I face the north, left to right, yung biyahe ng ating mga balangay and it, it uh, contributed to the growth of the region. I'll bring you back, sir, to your concern na distinct lang ba sa Pilipinas. So, nung tayo ay sina, bago tayo sinakop ng mga banyaga, pinaghati-hati tayo, we were called Nusantara during the Majapahit. Ito ay uh, sabi pa ni Wilhelm uh, Solheim, parang Nusantao. No? We were all one. And uh, when we were separated, each Southeast Asian nation created some sort of symbols of their own. 
Now, I don't see any problem if we make Balangay as our symbol because like Finland, um, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, their symbol is like some sort of a Nordic symbol, mga Vikings. Medyo okay lang eh. Tayo, walang gumagamit ng Balangay, baka pwede nating maunahan sila. Like Russia, I think the flag of Alaska, they use the bear. No? So, pwedeng magkaroon ng duplication but there's nothing wrong kung mauna tayo as, you know, using Balangay Boat as our symbol. And, uh, Talking about war, uh, Mr. Chair, na pag-aralan ko sa war history, na isa sa kinakatakutan ng mga galyon ay yung mga maliliit na balangay na sumisingit sa gilid-gilid ng galyon kasi ang galyon po hindi nakakababa yung kanyon. So ang ginagawa ng mga ancestors natin fighting the Spanish with their, you know, the galleons there, pinapana nila yon with apoy. Kaya galit na galit yung Espanyol. That's why hindi nila mat ma talo sa dagat doon sa boat building area nila tinatalo so other than our bards martial arts instructors yung Kitty Tirsakali yung ating mga boat builders hinahinay po yung na-eliminate lahat ang hindi na lang siguro naabot ng mga conquistador ay yung nasa dulo ng uh, tawi-tawi sa kadulo ng uh, ng Batanes so they literally killed us our identity uh, Mr. Chair because it's not the killing of the physical body in winning the war. To win the war, you have to kill the psyche of the people. And when the psychological aspect of that is killed, itikin mo na lang yung tao, Mr. Chair, mawawala na yun. This is what happened to our race. Kaya nagkawendang-wendang tayo ngayon. Kaya nung umakyat kami sa Everest, people were rallying, wow! Pag nakakita tayo ng Lea Salongo or Pacquiao, we were, we were rallying na, na ang galing nila. Because somewhere at the back of our mind, Mr. Chair, we are a lost people. We are looking for champion. Making this balangay as a symbol of respect, I like it when we are being termed as tayo'y kinakatakutan at ginagalang noon, will enable us, us and our youth to find a, an anchor point of the greatness, something, one great totem pole na doon natin pagbabasihan. It might be like Philippine Eagle, but Balangay is more culturally descriptive because e, pag sinabi mong Philippine Eagle, dabaw lang yun eh. Balangay is the whole archipelago. And it can even be a symbol that all Southeast Asian nations can relate because nakikita din nila, the Malaysians, Indonesians, Brunei, even Taiwan, they can see that. Now, in the growth of this nation, I think we need also these neighbors. But we have to give them a symbol that we are respectable, uh, you know, Filipinos also, by carrying that kind of uh, the, the, the great symbol. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Esquera. Um, uh, Dr. Esquera, I have a, an, a, 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 a simple question, no? because I also took note that uh, in other parts of our country, uh, there are other boats, no? For example, in Zamboanga, may Vinta. Uh -huh. uh, in uh, Tawi Tawi, uh, they have their own um, type of boat there. Uh, wh what makes the Balanghai or Balangay special compared to the other uh, endemic boats in the Philippines? Why, why is it special compared to the Vinta? And is it special compared to, let's say, the I, I, I see here in the notes, Tataya. Mm -hmm. So, and okay. bakit mo special ang uh, balangay? Mr. Chair, uh, actually the word balangay is the generic term. It's split of boats. Marami po siyang pangalan. Yung mga binabanggit niyo po, kasama po siya sa balangay boats. Shapes and sizes. Depende ano ang purpose niya. Pag nakakita kayo may cottage, uh, ito shallow river, uh, uh, parang river approach to. Kasi depende sa usage niya kung ano yung tinatawag nating uh, geographical position mo. If you are in the reading, no? kasi noon medyo legal pa ang slave trade, tumatawid tayo sa South China, West Philippine Sea, ginagamitan natin ng mga garay, uh, yung the bigger uh, war vessels. So, lepak is a houseboat. So the terms that like Baroto, 
Paloto, Piroka, Bidok, Lapid, Lepak, Biray, Buwang, depende kung saang tribu siya. Uh, these are all balangay boats. So the word balangay is actually a fleet of boats of different shapes and sizes. Okay. Sir Chair. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead po. Uh, yun po. Uh, gusto ko lang din ano, Valenzuela po ako. <laughs> Senator. Valenzuela, uh, yeah. Uh, yung rescue team mo po doon, uh, Suki po ako, ako po nag-train. Thank you, thank you. And, thank you. Uh, I'm proud of you. Sobra silang busy ngayon. Almost hindi na natulog because of uh, what's happening there on standby. Thank you. Kasi thank gusto, you. Pinagmayabang ko yung rescue center natin na nandun na lahat. Pag nagtuturo ako, ginagamit ko po isa Mr. Chair na gusto kong gayahin ng iba-ibang LGU. Meron thank you. Satellite, units. Tinuturo ko po yung rescue team. Suki po ako doon kay Dr. Antonio Arnaldo. Lagi po ako nagtuturo doon Mr. Chair. Ah, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your uh, service. Maraming salamat po. Anyone, to, anyone who wants to share po? Uh, from the body? Sir Chairman? Yes, go ahead po. Mr. Navarro, go ahead. Yes. I, I just would like to mention uh, in relation to your question about the maritime power of the Philippines, because I forgot to mention several details. On the trade missions alone that the Philippines, well, the islands in the Philippines sent to China would prove that we were indeed part of the empire that ruled the oceans. Because in the old days, those, those empires, so-called empires, were not actually empires by conquest and occupation. They were more empires because they controlled the sea lanes. And those who passed must pay tribute. Like the Majapahit, the Sri Visaya, they were empires more because of the control of the sea lanes, not because that they conquered or occupied territories. There were a few of those conquests and occupations. The Philippines was part of those empires that ruled the seas. That's why we needed to have peaceful relations, cordial relations, and peaceful coexistence with the known powers at the time, or the known users of the sea lanes. The first trade mission from the Kingdom of Butuan, riding on Balangais, was in 1003, 1003 AD, followed by the 1417 trade mission of the Sultan of Sulu, riding on five or more Balangais, with 300 people. He was eventually given a royal burial because he died on his way out of the Grand Canal. The maritime Silk Road that connected China, Southeast Asia, the Indian continent, the Arabian Peninsula, Somalia, Egypt, and Europe, the trade flourished there because the Balangais participated in the transport of cargoes and peoples. The Balangais reached as far as the Easter Islands and, as Dr. Ted mentioned, as far as Madagascar, where some of the descendants of our sailors are still living there. In total, over 760 years before the Spaniards came, we had 17 Balangai voyages to parts of Asia, which proved that we were not, at least the islands that had the Balangais, we're not pushovers, we're respected and feared. Now, on, on the issue of, of history, whether the Balangais are endemic to the Philippines, we should be modest enough to admit that we cannot put a historical claim to that. But we can claim that the most number of Balangais were found in the Philippines. There will be more found most likely in Batane, in Batanes and in in the Cagayan, the islands of Cagayan Valley and Tawi-Tawi and Sulu. Recently, there was a Balangay wreckage. They call it Barangay wreckage found in Indonesian waters, but it was too recent, a too recent construction compared to ours. The extant Balangay that was still flying the waters of the Philippines 
was built at the turn of the century in 1900. In 1920, it was just docked, and that Balanghay has been brought to Manila by Tony Pet Araneta. All I'm trying to say is this. History may later say that there were Balanghays in other places, but only the Philippines can claim to have a flotilla of those Balanghays found with dates as far as 320 AD, if that would be followed, but if the correction would be uh, followed, it was in the 787 year, 400 years later, but still predating the Chinese, the Chinese junks. Now, in Malaysia, as Art mentioned, there are Balangais, but they call them by different names. They use the same boat building technology. So I would close by saying that the Balangai is more of a boat building technology. Any boat that is built according to that technology is a Balangai. It comes with different names. The Basnig, the Lepa, which is a houseboat, the Tataya, the Palua in the north of Luzon, they're all Balangais using the same technology. And we can also lay claim to this. The only boat builders that are still using that technology after centuries would be our boat builders in Tawi-Tawi and maybe some in Sulu and in the Batanes Islands of Ibatan and Saptang. Those are the historical claims that we can actually put a lock on. The most number of Balangan relics were found in the Philippines and the boat building experts, master boat builders, using the Balangay technology, continue to build boats in the Philippines under different names. But the generic name is Balangay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Valdez, uh, Mr. Navarra, um, if Balangay is a technology, it's a boat, boat building technology, uh, wouldn't it declaring Balangay as a national boat, in effect declaring the technology, not the boat itself? And if it's a generic technology, wouldn't we wouldn't we declare generic technology? Or my my point is, we're declaring a generic item or a generic process. In this case, a generic technology. So, uh, wouldn't it be dangerous to declare a generic technology as a national boat? Na, na isip ko lang to, remember, I don't know if you guys have followed yung uh, case ng Hinebra San Miguel. No, Hinebra is a generic term for for gin, no? But uh, San Miguel uh, um, uh, applied it for trademark. And the counter argument of the other gin makers is you're applying a generic term. No? So my point here is, aren't we declaring a national, a generic term, a national vote? Yeah, anyone can answer. Um, um, yeah. Any of the experts can answer. May I answer first? Hmm. Yes, uh, Mr. Navarro, and I think Mr. Valdez wants to yeah, also answer. Art will have a more profound answer, most likely. But my answer is simply relies on the use of the word Balangay by Pigafetta. That's the first time that the word Balangay, although he spelled it as Balanghay, but H is silent because they didn't have this diacritical mark at the time. When H follows a G, the G should be pronounced as Ga, not as Ja. So anyway, when he wrote Balangay, that was the first time that the world encountered the term Balangay. It, it came to represent those boats that were built according to this technology. And I would dare say that perhaps 70, 80% of the boats under that technology continue to be called Balangays, Berangays, Berais. The variations are Karakoa, which is the Balangay Pangangayo ship or battleship, raiding ship. The Lepa is the Balangay Balangay, like a Balangay in every way, but it is a houseboat. The Tatawa, Tatawa, and Palua of 
Cagayan and Batanes would have rounder hulls, but they're still built according to the Balangay technology. But as I mentioned earlier, when those boats congregate on the shore, the place is called Balangayan. The boats may be called Pataya, Paloa, or whatever, but when they congregate, the people there in olden times called just the assembly of boats Balangayan, which supported the theory also of Dr. William Henry Scott, why Barangay would come from Balangay, partly because of the Balangayan term that was used to refer to the assembly of boats in a coastal or riverine uh, location. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Valdez, any comments, Pa? Mr. Valdez, uh, naka mute po kayo. Uh, well, it's, uh, the technology is a part of the process of the balangay. Balangay is really the, is really the boat. And during ancient time, it is built on a shell first construction. When we built the we uh, replica of the boat, we followed the technology. But at the later stage, especially if we have to keep on building boats, we will not be able to build a shell first construction because there are no more woods. The next balangay will be made up of uh, fiberglass. And the hull is still shaped the same, but it is a totally different kind of uh, technology uh, because there are no more woods to build that kind of boat. So, uh, but still, the hull, the shape, is still the balangay. It is just a matter of how it is being constructed. During ancient time, that's how they did it. As it evolved, uh, there's still banka or a casco or that has slowly evolved and built on a frame first construction. And I think the next kind of balangay that we'll be building will be made of fiberglass simply because there are no more wood and simply because marina will not register any more uh, hull that is not made of fiberglass. So it is in an evolving process. But still, it's still a banka or a balangay for that matter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Valdez. Truly, this mm -hmm. is a very interesting and insightful conversation. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot from this uh, conversation of ours. Um, Again, my my, my my understanding before was purely from a uh, public service point of view wherein the barangay uh, was created uh, because of the word balangay. But uh, uh, I learned today that it's, it's deeper than that and it represents our maritime history, maritime culture, and especially, most especially maritime power uh, during those times. And... Uh, uh, with that, uh, I really want to connect it to our potential, which is the maritime industry of the present day. I truly believe the Philippines is built for that. Eh? We, with our island, with our archipelagic uh, future, uh, the Philippines can be a maritime powerhouse. Uh, and we're already seeing that with the numerous OFWs working in the maritime industry globally. No? And they're in demand. No, It's not because we want to go out, but they are in demand and then i see that we, i want to see the day that uh, uh, our compatriots will not only be line workers but really first officers and captains of the major ships no and i think that is highly possible so with that um i've, I've already answered all of my questions um i would like to hear from yes somebody somebody was uh pong gusto magsalita mr chairman Yes. Uh, is that Mr. Navarro? Navarra? Sin Puyun. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, regarding the question on uh, the question on whether or not we are declaring the boat or yes, the technology. Congress Congressman Fortune, Kayo Bayon? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Kong Lawrence. Can I be heard, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Ah, Mr. Chairman, dun sa question ng ano, question kung ano bang declare natin dito, is it the boat or the technology? Ah, I think, Mr. Chairman, because we're declaring a national symbol, we should be declaring the boat itself as the national symbol. 
not just the technology, but the boat itself, that tangible okay. thing, the boat itself as the national boat. But that boat is, of course, representative of the technology. It's representative of the ideals of our seafaring, boat building ancestors in developing and carry, uh, carrying on that technology. So since we're, we're declaring a symbol, Mr. Chairman, it has to be something really tangible. So we're declaring the Balangay as a national boat, and that national boat, that Balangay, is representative of the technology, representative of the ideals of, of community, of solidarity, of harmony, of courage, of resilience, uh, involved you know, in building the boat and, and uh, sailing the boat. That's, that's my position, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, in addition, Mr. Chairman, to address the question of uh, the, uh, the, the concern of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts uh, regarding uh, 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 the Balangay, referring not only to those found in boat one, but to all other boats so that may be found elsewhere. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the original text, uh, when it was found in the House, referred only to those found in boat one, the relics there. Uh, but we've addressed that, Mr. Chairman, in section three of the bill, it says the Balangay found in but one city and as may be found elsewhere in the country is hereby declared the national boat of the Philippines. So we're not referring only to those found in but one, Mr. Chairman. Currently, uh, the relics are only in but one, but, uh, the, but section three uh, speaks as well of those that may be found elsewhere in the future in the country. Thank you, Kong Lawrence. And um, we have, uh, uh, for his last words, uh, Mr. Uh, Loris, Miss Loris Fileo, uh, she's also here with us. And um, uh, ma'am, any, any last words po before we terminate the hearing? Uh, Mr. Chairman, and my apologies for my late participation, and good morning to everyone. Uh, I think everything has been covered, but it, you know, during during you know yesterday when I found out late last night that and late last night that uh, everyone was supposed to give a position paper. I don't have a position paper, but but the thing, I mean, everyone knows wh what enabling provision should be given uh, that we would like to suggest. To this committee and uh the rationale behind that being if we tell our children that you know in the future that the national boat is balangay but if there are no balangays they will not know what it is it will not be a living heritage it's like when you say uh the, the eagle is our national bird but if the eagle is, is, is extinct and uh then you will know what it looks like what its properties are and the Balangay that is, is not just a boat, but it's also a symbol of the community, the the government, you know, in in its own unit, you know, of of Philippine society. And therefore, when you're speaking of that, it should be a living heritage, then it should be seen. And uh, so far, it's only been a few group of people, and most of them are here, who have made the effort to build it at their own expense and using their own resources. So it would be, I think, uh, um, in a way, uh, a, a not very effective law if it does not provide for the support and the continuance of the, the, the building of this boat and support of it. The, the details, I think my colleagues have already have already expressed earlier. So it is just, I'm just uh, putting in my own uh, persuasion, my own suggestion as to what this bill should contain to enable it to become really an effective symbol of, and a living symbol of our national heritage. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma'am Loris, and uh, thank you for sharing with us. Well, after an exhaustive discussion on this uh, bill, uh, we'll be endorsing to plenary House Bill number 4953. And uh, we would like to uh, request from the panel your position paper, if you have one. Uh, please uh, submit it to the committee on or before June 4. Um, after this, we'll be crafting the committee report already. Um, we will uh, 
uh, take uh, we will um, uh, consider House Bill 4953 as the main bill and we will also consider some amendments if 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 the other centers will have some amendments and then later on sponsor it on the floor uh we would like to get more information about uh, uh the balangay so feel free to submit to us uh, more information so that it will uh, enrich our discussion in plenary so yes yes okay Kong lawrence sorry mr chair uh Gusto ko lang dagdagyan ng details yung sinabi ni Ms. Loris uh, Ilian, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have with me a copy of the, their position. Uh, they want actually to uh, put in more, uh, put in like uh, enabling provisions uh, as follows. Number one, inclusion of Balangay modules in the curriculum for primary and secondary uh, school levels. Number two, commissioning the preparation of a manual on how to build a balangay as an intangible cultural heritage. Number three, uh, in, in, to encourage coastal provinces to build their own balangay boats uh, as an annual event, no? et cetera, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, th this representation welcomes uh, these suggestions. My only concern, Mr. Chairman, is the, is the one subject rule under the Constitution uh the one subject rule mr chairman if i may uh says under article 6 section 1 that every bill passed by congress shall embrace only one subject which shall be expressed in the title thereof since this is the title of, of the bill mr chairman is one of declaring balangay as the national vote uh I, I don't know mr chairman if uh if these provisions if uh included would embrace another uh, uh embrace another subject but uh if this is allowed mr chairman uh, i would personally mr chairman uh, propose that these amendments be included thank you uh, mr thank chair you. last na lang with you yeah, yeah. Uh, be before i recognize you mr valdez let me just respond to uh query of uh, congressman fortune uh we will study that you made a good point on the one in fact um i was actually I was discussing with my staff. I was actually thinking of inserting some form of activity. Um, for example, uh, maybe a festival or maybe a activity so that it's not only declaring it to the national vote, but also having physical activity to commemorate and to also uh, have some visualization of uh, what we are declaring as a national vote. You know? So, I was actually thinking along the lines, but we will review the jurisprudence on on this type of uh, uh, this type of uh, legislation, and I will give you feedback. You know? um, but definitely, we'll take note of the suggestions from uh, Ms. Luris and the other uh, resource persons. Uh, we recognize uh, Mr. Valdez. You know, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this is taking off from what Luris is saying. You know, for the past. 11, 12 years, we built five balangays to put life and meaning into what is a balangay. But we did it as a private group, the Kaya ng Pinoy and Global Forum. Uh, we, Butuan Global Forum, we partnered together and built the balangay. I, uh, at this stage, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm about to put finish on my boat building and balangay sailing. I think what is important is that this has to be sustained by allocating some amount to build a balangay boat for some activities, including technology transfer. I think uh, we did that from the private sector, Mr. Chair, and having the balangay as a national boat, I think from year on, the government must be able to come in and allocate something in order to create sustainability to this uh, national boat uh, uh, program. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Valdez. We'll take note of that and we'll take note of the suggestion of Ms. Loris and the uh, comment of uh, Congressman Lawrence. Um, with that, uh, I thank everyone for your time. And this is truly an interesting, very insightful discussion. And uh, I learned a lot today. And uh, we will endorse this to plenary. And uh, hopefully, we can get this approved uh, within the year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. This meeting is uh, adjourned.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Finally. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Chair. Everyone. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you, Mr. Much. Chair.